You're watching the Jay Kaminsky YouTube channel. How's it going? I'm Jay Kaminsky, two-time Olympic silver medalist in the sport of archery, and today I'm here to talk to you about extensions. The good, the bad, the ugly, what to look for, some new ones that I've worked on designing, and uh, some other features of some other ones. Before I get into that, I'd really appreciate you guys sharing this video, letting everybody know that I am back out there pushing more content out. Please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified every time a new video is uploaded to this channel. I'm trying to do stuff at least bi-weekly. Um, not only am I going to be doing form stuff and tuning stuff, but I also am going to get into arrow building, uh, tournament prep, mental prep, physical stuff, including uh, some workout stuff, some, uh, some warm-up stuff, some stretching stuff, lots and lots of different things. You won't be notified unless you hit that notification bell. So with that being said, let's get into it. So the extension is actually, in my opinion, the most critical part of the entire stabilization system. The little bit of exper the lot of experimenting that I've done with my extension has been quite eye-opening as far as how the bow reacts, how the bow feels, and ultimately how good the bow shoots. So I don't know the exact history of the extension. I'm gonna assume that recurve shooters or people when the V-bars, so two side rods, started becoming popular and attached to the bow, people started using extensions to get that V-bar block away from their arm so they'd have room as the bow is swinging. But with today's double adjustable V-bar brackets and all that stuff, it's really not necessary. And even when I had the uh, V-bar mounted directly to the riser, I never had arm clearances unless I really narrowed the stabilizers up and, and were put the V-bars themselves close together, but today we don't have to worry about that. In the stabilization video, which I'll put a link to up here as well as in the description below, I talked about the history of stabilization and how when compounds went from their aiming pattern was this big to this, like from old school stabilization to new school, school stabilization, and then their group went from this to this. There was a direct relationship between how they aimed, like how tightly they aimed, and where their arrows impacted. In my experience with a recurve, my group, my aiming pattern went from this. So I'm talking 70 meters, old school stabilization. My aiming pattern was in the blue, in any direction, just within the blue. That's how big my sight picture was. And my groups were, you know, about the size of the eight ring. Once I switched to modern stabilizers, my aiming pattern went from the blue at 70 meters to less than the size of the gold at 70 meters, but my groups went from this to this. They didn't really change a whole lot. So I've always been confused and very intrigued as to why that is, why the compounds have a direct relationship between their aiming pattern and their groups, and why recurve does not. My theory is that when compounds are at full draw, they have a stop to pull against. So not only does their draw length not change, especially when they're like shaking or under pressure or whatever, their draw length's not changing because they're pulled against the wall. But also, the each individual limb is not changing how much pressure it is putting on the bow or the arrow then. If you watch a recurve shooter shake, not only is their draw length changing, so not only are they at full draw and as they're shaking, draw length is changing, and of course that's exaggerated, but also while they're at full draw, they're shaking vertically too, which is moving the string independent of the riser, and each individual limb tip, if you watch them, they're curling and uncurling different from each other. So we're also, we're not just affecting our draw length, but we're also affecting essentially our tiller at full draw while we're shaking, while we're exerting on the bow as we're exerting different pressures, things like that, all that stuff is changing, but with a compound, it doesn't because they have a wall to pull against. So in about 2011, I set out to figure out why the aiming pattern and the grouping pattern did not directly correlate for a recurve. When I first started playing with things, we were playing with a thin stabilizer. Not necessarily a thin stabilizer, but a weak stabilizer. So weak meaning it was easily bent, easy to be bent. And to do it with a thick stabilizer like was on the market come that time, they would have to make the wall thickness so thin that it would be very, very brittle and not very durable at all. 
So they shrunk the outside diameter as well because that also um, reduces the actual stiffness of the rod itself. And we could still keep a higher modulus carbon to keep that durability up. So a byproduct of what I was trying to come up with was making the rods thinner. And so I did stumble upon something that was shocking. I stumbled upon a self-aiming property to where if the bar was weak enough but not too weak, if I had a bobble, like a wind would blow me, or I just have a random movement on my sight picture, the rod would absorb it and then snap me back to where I was aiming, but not be so weak that it would snap me past that point. I worked quite a bit with AAE to design this one. This is the Avante X. Um, and, and it de definitely worked out quite well as far as that property goes, but I still did not see a group pattern get any better. I started playing around with extensions like this. This is a extension that's made out of a bee stinger. It's not the competition series, it's the better one, the Premier or something like that, uh, as far as what this actual rod is. But I stumbled upon this one felt best and we saw the least amount of residual vibration after the shot using this particular build with a three inch extension with an inch of disconnect in between. It got better when I made it a inch and a half end cap and then a half inch end cap and put the disconnect towards the bow. It made it even better, but it became so uh, delicate that they just broke apart all the time and it wouldn't work. So this one is one that I shot in the 2012 Olympic games and uh, it, it ended up working out quite well, but it still didn't answer the question as to what the difference is between compound and recurve. I already talked a little bit about the limb tips curling and uncurling, so I'm gonna explain to you why that's important. So the idea of stabilization is to clamp your bow down in space to allow the arrow to be delivered before the bow starts moving again and doing what it wants. Now, that is very helpful with a compound because they have a wall and they have, uh, there's no way that their two limbs can work independently of each other when they're pulled against the wall. They're just at the wall and that is what it is. With a recurve, again, not that simple. So the whole idea is what if the limb was here on one shot when I let go compared to here on one shot when I let go? They're gonna completely change the way the arrow is being pushed. So the modern stabilization system being so stiff, so rigid with no rubber damper, um, it is gonna want to clamp the riser and the bow down in space as the arrow is being delivered before it snaps back to its natural position that it wants to be in. That is a very good thing for compound again, but for recurve, I'm not convinced that that's optimal. I'm also not convinced that old school stabilizing tech with really weak rubber dampers, weak stabilizers and the like are also good for it because then it's just letting the bow flop all over the place and do what it wants. I believe that it needs to be controlled, but controlled just enough to allow the limbs as the arrow is being de delivered to kind of recenter themselves and then push the arrow. So that needs a little, you need a little bit of give within the stabilization system to let the limbs kind of come back to their natural state to then push the arrow down instead of either being clamped down in the wrong place where the arrow is delivered and then they come back or it's so weak that they're in the wrong place and then they do all sorts of stuff as the arrow is delivered. So I hope that that little mov movement can kind of illustrate what I'm trying to get at. So while I was going throughout my uh, experimentation in extensions. I was taking a three inch extension with a one inch disconnect to a three inch extension with the end caps butted against each other. That felt horrible. A solid aluminum one felt horrible. One with a weaker rod itself also felt horrible even with the same dimensions, just a different modulus carbon in the inside. It just didn't feel right. I tried it with longer ones, go to a four inch with an inch in the center, didn't work. Uh, four inch with two inches in the center, didn't work. It just didn't feel the same. There, it didn't have that same dynamic feel, but this one always felt that way, no matter what type of uh, extensions, uh, or no matter what type of angles on the V-bars, no matter what type of dampers, all sorts of stuff. This one just ended up working the best. It felt the best and it definitely grouped better too. Um, so when I was trying all sorts of other ones, like this is a win and win one, it didn't feel good. Um, 
you know, there's a million of them out there. And this was the only one that I stumbled on that worked well. And this one's custom made. As you can tell, it's been smashed a bunch. It's been glued, broke apart, re-glued, uh, lots, of, lots of issues. Um, the extension sees a whole lot of forces exerted on it as the bow's being, um, you know, vibrating as you're setting the bow down, as you're breaking it down and putting it back together. And ultimately this epoxy just kept failing and I had to keep re-gluing it myself. That just won't work for a consumer. Um, so we never really went to market with this specific one. The Bee Stinger did come out with one that, um, was the same dimensions, um, with a different end cap setting because this one kept breaking free, but it didn't have the same dynamic feel that this one did for whatever reason. So because the, uh, the Bee Stinger one felt really good in three inches, but felt terrible in four inches, you know, I know as an archer that there are lots of different preferences out there for different sized quick, uh, different sized extensions. So I wanted to have it as short as possible because I believed that, you know, there was some people out there that don't run extensions. They run the V-bar bracket directly on the bow and that's okay. So I wanted to try to appease to them by running a very, having a short one available, but also needing to have one long enough to, to be available for the people who want the longer extensions as well. But I needed the ability to tune it, to make it work in a manner that you could adjust it to get the feel that you were looking for and also get rid of that issue when I went from the three inch bee stinger to the four inch bee stinger, it still didn't feel good. So this is what I came up with. This is the AAE gold um, extension here that I came up with and it is it adjustable. So you can see it's two pieces, this spot and this spot, this spot and this spot are separate of each other. They're connected with a 5 16 24 uh, bolt, but there's a actual piece of urethane or Delrin, depending on what you want to put in there, uh, that changes the entire feeling of the system. Not only that, as you can see, these numbers here are graduated as well. So you can adjust how much preload you have on the actual dampening bushing on the inside here as well. I got the idea to try something like this from something that is like 80s archery tech. It's called the TFC. I believe it's like the Torque, Torque Flight Compensator, something like that. Um, they had two different ones. They had a small one and a big one. The big one was supposed to be you screw it in between your stabilizer and the bow, um, but because now we're using so much uh, weight on the bows, that just didn't work, especially with an extension. It just kind of drooped and didn't fit right, right? But uh, I wanted something that was similar to that, but rigid enough that I couldn't move it with my hands and couldn't move it on my bow, other than when it, I'm shooting and you see the dynamic forces on the actual bow. So I'll show you the components of this actual extension, and then I'll show you how to adjust it, and I'll display to you how I can feel what it's doing. It's two pieces. There's a cone on this side and the opposite cone on this side. And then there's this 5 16 24 bolt that is basically collet style locked. So you can uh, lock it through a pin that runs through on this side. There's a, uh, another 5 16 24 that you access through the extension to lock this in place. And then in between the two pieces, there's two different uh, options. This is the Delrin piece, which is a piece of hard plastic. And then there is a urethane piece, which I don't have for some reason. Um, I have, but I can't find. Um, but it basically is the same exact thing, but like this piece, it's squishy, but very squishy. It's the same type of urethane that is used in car suspension bushings. I forget the actual stiffness or the shore of it. Um, but it is weak enough to absorb and move quite a lot, but it is still supporting uh, the stabilization system because of this cone and the bushing itself is very, very thin. It's not thick at all. So what you can do is you can screw them together and adjust your preload with how much is actually, um, how much tension or crush force is on the stabilizing system and therefore how stiff it is. You can have it here at zero. You can preload and add more and more and more tension. Um, it's difficult with the actual Delrin piece, 
but the urethane bushing, you can get quite a bit of adjustment within the urethane bushing to play with how it feels. There's a couple of tricks on how to assemble it. You know, there's these uh, holes here that are drilled for you to slide a, uh, I think a 3 16 um, Allen wrench in there. So that way when you're tightening it down, you know, most people will just grab their V-bar like this and then tighten it down in their bow. But you can't with this one because you're you can potentially change the tension of it and the clocking of where your V-bars are, uh, especially if you don't have this tight enough. So that's where these holes are designed for you to stick the, uh, the Allen wrench in and then use that to tighten down. You can see that this one here is uh, has some marks in it already because it's been um, put on and off quite a few times. But the whole idea of what I wanted to accomplish with this extension was to, again, try to compromise of having a stable old school stuff that's way too floppy, new school stuff way too stiff. This kind of blends the two together, but it controls the bow just enough. It doesn't allow it to flop all over the place. Uh, this one just gives it that little bit of extra control. And the best way to show you, it's really impossible to show you here on camera, but what it does is I will tell, tell people to take the extension and hold it like this. And then if you take your bow and you hit your limb like this, it's vibrating because things are loose. Um, but when there's an extension and or when the stabilizers are on there and you hit it like this, you can feel the bow moving just a little bit independent of the stabilizing system because there's this disconnect here. This is a red anodized one. This one's a prototype, uh, but it's the same thing. I have found, like I said, this, the extension is the most critical part of how the bow feels too. Not just how it performs, but how it feels. I have seen my scores increase with the AAE extension as I started working with it more and more. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Unfortunately, I kind of left the archery industry before it could really get fully implemented. But if you're ever at the, specifically like the Arizona Cup or anywhere that AAE is at a booth, I bet you they'll let you try their extension. They'll put it on your bow for you and you can go to the practice range and see how it feels totally changes the way the bow sounds, totally changes the way the bow feels. I'm really, really, really happy with it. And I would definitely recommend it. As far as other extension goes, other extensions go, they all will work. They're just extensions. I don't think that there's any that are tunable or changeable or adjustable to make your bow feel better and shoot better for you. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you get notified every time a new video is uploaded. For seminar and book info, head to jkaminski.com or click on the link below. And uh, yeah, I appreciate you guys watching. If you would, please share this video. It really helped get the word back out that I am back out there. Thanks again. Take care.